Josie here, Toronto Real Estate Agent and Mortgage Broker, and today I'm going to talk to you about my top 10 strategies for investing in Toronto's real estate in 2020. What are the best strategies, my top 10 strategies for investing in Toronto's real estate in 2020? Let's go. I'm going to go right to it. EOC Kaplan Real Estate, YorkVilluxuryRealEstate.com. If you see that pop-up investor inside it, put your name, your email, your mobile, and you'll get on the best mailing list for investors in Toronto. Okay. i got a bunch of notes here for you. Let's go one by one. Number 10, which is the, always the first one, is taking action. Nothing else matters. And what do I mean by that? What do I mean by that is... Throughout the years that I've been doing this, you know, starting as an investor myself and working for real estate brokers and then becoming an agent myself and jumping into the investment game and seeing it from the seller and the buyer perspective and the developer perspective and the agent perspective, the number one thing that people don't do is they don't take action. When they don't take action, nothing happens. You need to take action. You can see on my website, I take a lot of actions. I post a lot of stuff. I'm involved. I breathe it, live it. You know, a lot of people call me. When you call me, I'm going to answer the phone, I'm going to call you, I'm going to ask you questions. Um, you know, what's your, what's your stage of investing? What's your experience? Are you buying? Are you selling? Would you like to flip? Do you need some uh, value estimation on units? It's all good, but you got to take action. You know, whether you're looking for MLS listings, whether you're looking for pre-construction, whether you're looking for a great deal, um, if you want to track price drop alerts, there's a lot of ways to, talk, to, to take action. All these, uh, all these uh, beautiful sites that I'm using, get instant VIP access to hundreds of new condos developing across the GTA. All these I'm going to share with you. You got to take action on the charts too. But the most important thing is you take action. A lot of people, you know, they say, yeah, I've got $100,000 available to invest. I got $200,000 to invest. Um, I'm thinking maybe I should sell the condo. I mean, it's getting a little old and it's not. I'm going to have a lot of expenses now, you know, got to replace appliances and this and that and maybe change the floor and I don't know if I'm going to do this. And look at the prices. Look at the prices going up and you tell me what's going to happen. I was, I was looking at the Tesla, at the Tesla stock recently, TSLA. Let's see if we can get that. Um, so here it is. And <clears throat> I was reading this really interesting thing and, and, and this is, look at this year. This year the Tesla stock was as low as $185, okay? And as high as uh, this is now 408. So twice that thing um, that thing is more than double in six months. Okay, Tesla doubled in six months. Could it drop? Uh, sure. Will it drop? I don't think so. I mean, look at this. Look at this right now. It's been up, but it's been so low this year earlier, 190, and then it's like 235, and now 408. So. The people that say, oh, you know, I didn't buy Tesla when it was 22, I didn't buy when it was 30, I didn't buy when it was 100, I didn't buy when it was 200, I didn't buy when it was 300, now I'm going to wait for it to drop. Oh, you think it's really going to drop? Do you really think that something like Tesla is going to drop? If you do, sure, short it. If you got the guts, if you got the balls, short it. Uh, but I think a lot of short sellers are going to lose, lose the bets. And uh, I think the same with the Toronto real estate. I mean, look at this. Uh, the Toronto real estate, you know, it's, it's brick and mortar. Um, it's an established industry. It may not double itself in six months, but it's chugging along just fine. And it's chugging along in the 5, 10, 15, and 20% range. Obviously, that depends on um, where you are in the market. That depends on the type of product you buy. Depends on your location. Depends on, you know, what kind of unit you buy. But overall, and I gave you this video uh, the other day. Overall, um, I'm seeing that the market... The Toronto real estate market is probably going to go something like 10 to 15 percent up in 2020. Okay, so let's go to my channel here, uh, youtubecom slash Kaplan, and you can see here um, increase of 10 to 15 percent. Uh, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm thinking of increase of 10 to 15 percent in 2020. So average of 12 percent. That's one percent a month. So your condo, your $600,000 condo. Uh, in 30 days, that means $200 a day, and that's this video here. Uh, how much more are you going to pay? And it's going to be $200, $200 a day, more or less, for that condo, okay? Um, $200 for the condo every day, and maybe $225 for the townhome every day, and $250 for that semi every day, and then $300, you know, give or take, of course, uh, every day, increase in value of a Toronto home. So... If you, if you can afford a Toronto home right now, okay, whether it's a condo or a townhouse or a semi or whatever it is, 
and you're not buying it, you lost $200 today. And tomorrow, you lost $200 more. And the day after, you lost $200 more. And the day after, you lost $200 more. Because you just didn't take on the opportunity. You didn't act on it. So you got to act, my friends. You have to take action. If you can, you got to take action. Now, rental rates are not going to go as fast as, as prices. It's just not possible because, and I showed you the glass door sites, it's just not possible. The reason is because um, salaries just don't go up as much. They just don't. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to filter here for actual uh, listings. Uh, I don't want to see the rentals. So there you go. There's a lot of opportunities here. Obviously, these are, you know, you, you can sort this from low to high, and I put the minimum of 400. So you can see, you can find stuff uh, that's commercial. I'm not sorting by, uh, by type, but th there's almost nothing in the 400. There's one studio assignment, okay? That's it. And everything else is very close to the five mark. Basically, everything is in the five mark. Okay, so that's your thing. Take action. It's the most important thing. You gotta take action. Uh, rental guarantee number nine. Is it worth it? Well, rental guarantee can be worth it if it makes sense. How do you do this? You go to the condo, condo calculator.ca. Okay, you put your name, you put your email, and you hit this. You hit I'm not a robot, and you go download now, and you're gonna download the sheet. I talk about it quite a bit. And you can, you can compare what the developers offer you in terms of rent and what you think you can get on the open market. And of course, if someone else does all the job for you, then it saves you time and money and stress. So you've got to fa factor it all in and to look, at, to look at the rental rates. The other thing you can do is you can look at what kind of rental rate you will need by the condo calculator and just, it'll tell you, you need $3 a foot or $4 a foot and then see what the developer offers. And then you can even figure out if it even makes sense for you to buy the rental guarantee. Um, with the investment or to rent it by yourself or not even to buy it or just to buy it and forget about the rental guarantee. Some developers will give you a, a little discount if you do not take the rental guarantee. I've seen a couple of projects was up to 2% of the unit price, which is quite a bit, you know, so they'll be on a 600,000 unit, they'll be $12,000. Okay, beware of these developers, number eight. So which developers you need to, you need to watch out for? You know, there is a lot of uh, there's a lot of talk about canceled projects in Toronto. There's a lot of talk about can canceled projects in Toronto, and um, you know there's some developers y y you can you can imagine that they're gonna be okay. Like the large developers been for a while, you know, like Tridel or Altera or uh, Plaza or you know any of these H uh, and R. These are huge huge developers. It, it, you know, West Bank built Shangri La. Uh, you know, they're not going anywhere. You know, here's Pemberton. They're not. They're not going anywhere. These developers. Um, but what can go? What what can go is small developers. Okay. Even even uh, some massive projects in Vaughan, like big big towers, were, were were canceled. Okay. And the reason they were canceled is very simple because the developer realized that if they cancel and resell, they can make more money. But what happens to all the buyers? You know, the buyer usually will maximize everything they have. So if the buyer has $150,000 available, they will spend the whole 150 available and the 15% hope to get another five uh, at the end. Most, a lot of buyers will do this. So maybe they spend the 15%, keep another five in the pocket for the last, for the occupancy. And then they hope to flip it or they hope that the value go up and they close on it. That's fine. Um, but if that developer canceled on the project, they pull the rug on your feet, the next building is going to cost you more. So now you want 50 if before it got you uh, a unit, say, uh, 600 square feet, now they want 50, only get you get your unit 500 square feet, but you're paying the same price. So what happened? Your PSF, your dollar per foot went up, and because your dollar per foot went up, you're actually getting less condo. You're paying more for the same thing. Or because your, your amount of cash available is finite, you're actually not buying what you wanted to buy anymore. You're not buying the one plus den anymore. You're buying the, just the one bedroom. You know, buying a two bedroom, you're buying a one plus ten. Okay? So that's the issue. If you not take action, um, and especially if you don't take action and go to, and then you finally decide to go to a crappy developer, it's just not going to help you. Okay? Now, how can you filter for these developers? Well, you got to do the research and you got to figure out if the developer had a cancellation before, you got to watch out very, very carefully. And if the developer is the first developer, you got to watch out very, very carefully. Or if the developer has been doing a certain kind of investment, um, but now moving to another, you got to be very, very careful. So you got to be careful of everything, okay? 
Okay, that's good. There's some people next to me talking, but I hope it's not going to be too loud. Um, and number seven is balancing the deposits and profits. When, when I talk about balancing the deposits and profits, when I talk about balancing the deposits and profits, when you buy an assignment, you got to make sure that, um, you know, a lot of people want profits up front, but that, somebody called me yesterday, just to call me and said, you know, I, I've had this uh, condo downtown, I bought it for a ridiculous price, it was really cheap, and now when I sign it, and it's like, you know, five or 600 square feet downtown, really good location, and somebody offered me 550 deposit and profit up front, I go, oh my God, so your profit was about $250,000, quarter million dollar profit, and they offered you your 50,000, so basically someone had $300,000 to pay you, um, for a condo of $550,000. That's well over 50%. He goes, yeah, but now even more. Because do you really think you can find another person that will give you 50 or 60% of the value of your condo up front? I mean, who does this? How many people do you know that do this? Not too many. So, you know, you got to balance the deposit and profits. If, uh, if it makes sense as a seller and they offer you good money, take it. And as a buyer, if they want too much, just don't. Just don't. Just wait. You know, it's it's fine. No, no big deal. Uh, there'll be another one. But act act smartly. Don't be greedy. Be a good investor. Good investor puts money on a table. Good investor always um, reduces the risk and takes what they can. Uh, here's 676 Richmond. This is an old uh, conversion. Look how beautiful. And these things go up in value quite nice. There's always opportunities. Okay. Um, strategies for selling assignments so back to my point if you have an assignment okay if you have an assignment you want to sell um, and you can see the market you got to realize a few things first of all a lot of assignment sellers they are delusional or you can say that they are misinformed now why are they delusional or misinformed because they didn't do the homework and what happens is they're trying to sell you these assignments uh, completely not realizing that the price they're asking is way too much so if, Investor Insider, if you want to get the news, and then go to UrbanRealtyToronto.com, go to the bottom for assignments here, and there's always in the system about 50, 60, 70, now it's 90 assignments available here. So um, you can see here, these are assignments, and these are all sellers of assignments, okay? So for example, there's a studio here at Dundas Square Gardens. Uh, it's going to come on the market very soon, and it's a tiny little studio, and they're asking just under half a million dollars. Okay, I wonder if it says how many square feet here. It does not. Uh, the tax, the the condo fees are one ninety three. So this is probably around four hundred square feet. Okay, four hundred square feet. So, you know, you probably paid for this thing two two fifty. You're basically doubling doubling your money here. Okay, if you're doubling your money, don't worry, don't nickel and dime. Don't be greedy. Take the money, put it in your pocket, and move on. Uh, when this building is going to be completed, there will be 700 people. You know, there's, there's nearly 1,000 units in this building. There's a lot of tiny, tiny, tiny units in this building. There are so many people buying and selling here. But, you know, if you can get a good deal now, you may do a lot better than, than, uh, than doing a deal later. And you can see more and more and more of those five um, of these uh, of those, uh, 200 Dundas, okay? So they're just coming out, and you can see 40 a floor, 510, and that's at least 500 square feet. So that's less than a thousand a foot. That's a good deal, and that's a good deal, and there's lots and lots and lots in this building. So the strategy for selling assignment is your price has to be attractive enough for people to buy it, and your deposit strategy, you know, how much money you're collecting up front from um, deposit and profit has to make sense. If you're asking too much, the buyer is going to go to the next person, okay? Now, you may think to yourself, oh, I want $1,500 a foot because the, everyone else is getting $1,500 a foot. Wait, you're not going to get it because the building that comes to market, uh, there's a psychological thing. First of all, everyone knows that, you know, you paid $600 a foot on this thing. Um, they'll be very reluctant to pay you $1,500, especially if you just, you just got it. Um, instead, what's going to happen is that they're going to try to give you market price. So you look around the MLS, you know, the MLS, go to yossi.searchrealty.co and go on the MLS. Maybe here you can see what's going on, okay? And that's how, that's the MLS right here, 200 Dundas, okay?
need to do the search in a different way, but it's it's right here. Okay. So in order to get this, that's what you gotta do. Oh, because it's at C8. Okay, that's why. Let's see if I can go this way. Yeah, that works. It's 200 Dundas. And there you go, because it's a, it's a Toronto C8. So you see, there's already quite a few units here. At least 15, the system knows. Okay, so you got a, you, you got, you got a lot of supply here. So obviously, the price is going to be depressed. Get the best uh, buyer you can and move on. Sell it, put money in your pocket and move on. Now, the strategy for buying assignment is exactly reverse of what you've seen. If you want to invest in 200 and done, that's, this is a great time. Give me a call. What we're going to do, we're going to comb all these units. We're going to basically, one by one, figure out which is a real listing. A lot of these listings are fake. Don't forget, they don't actually have the listing or they sold it and they keep it or whatever. Or it's facing into a bad place. But here's this is a very nice unit. I, you can tell it's a very nice unit. So maybe it's worth a bit more investigation. And this could be a very good option. Also, strategy for buying assignment, obviously you want to buy a unique product. So if you're buying something that already everyone already has, um, it could be good, but you're going to compete with many more units just like yours. So can you buy something a little bit unique? Okay, maybe if, if this building has a lot of small units and you can buy the corner two unit on a high floor, that could be better for you. So that's your strategy for buying assignments. Obviously, in negotiate well, get the right person on your side, get the OCR on your side, I'll help you. Okay. Strategy for low cash investors. Low cash investors, you know, they're, they're kind of squeezed out these days, but they have options. The first thing that the easiest thing for them to do is to start looking for price drop alerts, okay, for reduced, uh, look for new project, and there's always some special, but you got you gotta ask me. You gotta ask me what the specials are, because I won't be able to <laughs> just find it. Basically, everyone's different, so maybe this is enough for you, um, but maybe it is not. So if you can afford the 500, you know, maybe 200 Dundas is a really good option, but you may have to move out of town, you may have to move to a wider search area, you know. Um, so you can go to yossi.searchrealty.co and you can look at Hamilton. There's nothing wrong with Hamilton. It's coming up real fast. Um, let's search everything in Hamilton. This is just sorted by, so there's obviously a lot of homes, less condos in Hamilton, but you may be able to do a really good deal in Hamilton, find yourself a really good deal, and then get a good rental. Or maybe you can look, uh, if you want to look at Brantford, it's going to get cheaper because a little farther, or Cambridge, or Guelph, or Kitchener, Waterloo. So the strategy is to really open your mind to new locations, new areas, um, new type of product. And you may be able to find a way to do it. Another thing you can do, of course, is invest with someone else. That's the condo calculator here. But what I wanted to show you, there was a video that explains how to invest with other people. So if you don't have a lot of money to invest, or you don't have enough to invest, maybe you have a lot of money but still not, not enough, that's okay. You can go here, and there's a, there's a video that explains how to buy with a partner. Okay, so maybe you can find someone that you have some trust with, and you can have an agreement with them, and, and you can do this. How to buy real estate with a partner. Okay, so... Check it out. Maybe that's what you gotta do. Maybe both of you each bring sixty thousand to the table, and suddenly you can buy a condo. And after you flip it, or you take the cash flow, then you can generate enough cash to buy another and another and another. So that's a really good option. Okay. Um, what to do if I have tons of cash? Ah, that's a really good question, but it's not. The answer is not as easy as you think. If you have tons of cash, you can do a lot of stuff. First of all, you can go to distressed sellers and offer to get them out. Now, those are not easy to find because the listing will never say distressed seller. We're not in the States, we're in Canada. Um, you're going to need human intervention, human element. That's called EOC, EOC Kaplan Real Estate Agent, buying and selling. So if you're looking for, if, if you have a lot of cash and you're looking to buy distressed property, I'll help you. But that's really one-on-one -on -one with people because you're not going to find them and it's a lot of work to find a distressed property. It is possible. None of these listings will say distressed property, okay? Uh, there's price drop alert. But the price drop alert doesn't necessarily mean um, it's a distressed property. Maybe just maybe the price was just too high. You know, maybe, maybe the guy just checking the market. So, you know, I want a million stuff for this. And Yossi goes, but that's only worth 850 He goes, I don't care. Just put a million. See what happens. Okay. Number two. Flip or close. If you own an assignment, let's say you're owning one of these units at Dundas, should you flip it or should you close on it? But first of all, the answer is always personalized to you. 
because the the answer if you want to flip or close depends on your own financial situation and your life situation but generally speaking if you can if you think it's going to make a good investment and you can run the numbers with the counter calculator see how much cash you're going to get out that's one thing if you need the cash in your pocket maybe you should consider selling give me a shout i'll give you um, an honest price review i'll tell you what i think you can sell it for i'll tell you how long it's going to take you to sell and i'll tell you how much it's going to cost you to sell and we can do a quick calculation see how much money will actually stay in your pocket don't forget there's taxes involved legal services involved all these things involved so once you do these you have a good idea of how much cash you can leave in your pocket and then you can understand if you want to keep this unit or you want to flip it okay um, generally speaking it's sometimes a good idea to put some money in your pocket and reinvest but you know there's many many factors pending so that that's very, very subjective do the homework and then take action and the last one is what are the hottest areas so you know i'm starting to move away from the subway line i know a lot of people especially from asia they are fixated and obsessed with being on the subway but maybe not realizing buying on the subway 1300 foot or 1500 foot does not break even unless you're doing 30 40 and 50 percent money down just to break even so some people have you know a quarter million dollars lying around and they would like to do this and that's totally fine but what are you going to do in, in another situation i don't know so <laughs> that's that's really again that's up to you uh, but the hardest areas you got to think to yourself do i want to invest a thousand dollars a foot a thousand a thousand dollar foot and take the increase like uh, the keely that's still a few units left if you go here, go to the top here, to the urbanrealtytoronto.com, and then the Keeley Condo Investor Special, you can still find really, really good units for these kind of prices, okay? So one plus uh, then 520, and that's close to York University. It's a fantastic developer and really good area, um, and you get a lot more, with parking, by the way, and you get a lot more for your money than 520. You get 400 square feet downtown, okay? So you can look at your returns. You can also look here at the site and see this is sitting like literally across from downs you park by the lake. So I really like it. I think it's a very good option. Okay, my friends, this is it. Um, these are these are my my main ten strategies, and I'll give you, I'm going to review and then give you the bonus. So number number ten is taking action. Nothing else matters. If you don't take action. If you do not take action, nothing's going to happen. So you, you, I don't care how much money you have or how big your talk is. If you don't take action, you're nothing. You're zero. It just doesn't work. And, you know, do nothing is also an option. But if you're an investor saying, I want to invest, and you're not investing, tomorrow is going to be more. Just like the Tesla stock, you know, you didn't buy a 400, you're going to have to buy the 500, the 600. Who oh, I'm going to wait for it to crash or the market to crash. That's just ridiculous. Um, the market, the economy is way, way bigger than all of us. It's huge. No one investor, one real estate agent, not even one city can affect it. We're going to need to have a global catastrophe for these things to change. And there's no global catastrophe coming as right now. So that's what you need to understand. Um, rental guarantee, go to the condo calculator and make sure that rental guarantee makes sense. If you need help using it, let me know. I'll help you. Beware of these developers, the first-time developers, developers that... If canceled before developers that are iffy look them up what do they do these people you know look them up call them up see what kind of service you get test them test them test them if they're if they're true what is it true try tested it true <laughs> like try Dell you know fine no problem um, but the little guys you got to watch out a lot of projects being canceled you don't want to be one of those because you can you can be left um, with a deposit sitting there for two years, by the time you get it, it's worth a lot less in two years, you know? Worth 20, 30, 40% less. Balancing deposits and profits. This is when it comes to assignment. You have to balance your deposits and profits. Once again, go here, go to Urban Realty, hit the assignments link, and then you're going to get, and, and then you'll see some assignments. There's obviously a lot more, but that's a good idea just to start, okay? So that's a good idea, that's to start. And from here you can start the balance, you know. If the person wants a $300,000 deposit and the condo is 600,000, that's 50% down. Do you want to do this? Or can you use it 300 better? Okay, that's what, I, that's what I mean. And these two strategies for selling assignments and buying assignments, the, the, you know, whether you're buying or selling, you got to understand if there's a good deal, 
you need to take action on it you need to make sure of course that you're safe both buyer and seller and you need to make sure that it makes sense to you if you sell the assignment put the put the profit in your pocket especially if you don't want to deal with closing and closing costs and tenants and vacancy rates because everyone's going to try to get a tenant so you're going to be vacant for a few months uh, and, or, or you're going to have to lease it for a little less uh, the market rate and for buying the assignment is the same but in, in reverse is make sure you don't pay too much make sure that you give them as little cash as possible make sure your money is safe make sure you do a good deal make sure your real estate is good make sure your lawyer is good and so on uh, low cash investors have to look for other areas. Don't look on the subway. It's not for you. Look other areas. Get out of Toronto. Look in Hamilton. Look in Kitchener, Guelph, Waterloo. You can search on my website. It's all listed. Uh, if you have tons of cash, the reverse of this, then you can maybe offer distressed seller cash deals and get a really amazing deal. Just get them out. Buy it. Everyone's happy. To flip or to close, that depends on how much headache you want to have. Uh, closing is a headache. Getting tenants is a headache. PDI is a headache. Uh, maybe you just want the money in your pocket and of course if you do want the money in your pocket don't be too greedy because that's going to force you to close if you're just not cooperating with buyers interested but there's also a lot of fake buyers that give offers but they never do it and in 2019 i had tons of fake buyers i had to deal with okay so those are a problem too i'm not sure why they would send offers that they didn't don't send deposits but it's happening everywhere a lot of my real estate agents friends tell me this happening to them too it happened to me uh, in the hottest areas, they're no more on the subway line because they're just too expensive. I would look for secondary, um, but they're not secondary. You know, King West is not secondary. To me, it's better than it's just better living and better lifestyle. That means to me that the tenants will be less transient. They want to stay longer. To me, that's better. A lot of people that are fixated with the subway line do not understand this. They do not understand quality of life, and it pertains to a large Canadian city mostly because they come from other places where they view it subjective, where they view quality of life and how to live different. They just want to be on the subway line. But I don't because I cannot go on a subway. There are no parks. The quality of life is not good. It's loud. It's polluted. It's usually windy. Uh, you know, I don't care for that. I want quality of life because an investor, at the end of the day, I look at my ROI. I don't look at anything else. And I can do ROI everywhere. There's a lot of investors that specialize in actually low-budget building because that's where you can find huge ROIs, okay? So open your mind to this. And you can actually buy maybe two cheap condo versus one big one and spread, spread your eggs a little bit. Bonus, is it too expensive? Well, there's two ways to check if it's too expensive. Number one is what's the market given for it? And number two is what's the break even and what's the ROI, which you're going to calculate here. If it's too expensive, you got to think to yourself, why would I buy it? Am I buying it for the future? Am I buying it for today? Do I want to put more money down? So on and so forth. Okay, my friends, that's it for today. These people are getting really loud next to me. So, done for today. Uh, do your best. If you, wanna, if you want information, go to the Investor Insider. Uh, please like and share this video. I really appreciate everyone's feedback and positive support. It really means a lot to me making all these videos for you two or three times a week. 2020 is going to be an amazing year. Price is going to be really, really high. And you can still grab a few assignments. You know, the next couple of months are really the cheapest months of the year. And then it's done. Then it's going to go up so much. I want to tell you, if you just look here, 783. So this went up again. This was 766 uh, or something yesterday. And you can see here, those prices are coming up and up and up. We are basically like hitting that 770 every month now. Okay, so... December is supposed to be low. It's not. Uh, November is supposed to be low. It's not. Look at uh, all these months here. December drop. November, December drop. No more. We're going up. 2020 is going to be a crazy year. It's going to be really expensive. If you need to buy, do it now. Do it now because tomorrow it's just going to be too late for you. I'm telling you. Yossi Kaplan, Toronto Real Estate Agent Mortgage Broker. Thank you very much. Buy and sell and give me a call. That's